Hello and welcome to my video on day count conventions. For this video, I planned the following. First of all, I would like to go into some terminology and notation. Then I would like to go into individual day count conventions. First of all, into the Euro interest method that is also called French interest method or actual 360. The second convention is the English interest method, also called actual 365. Then the German interest method, that is called 30360. Then we go into the US interest method, that is rather complicated here, or it's 30E 360. And last but not least, the very relevant daily or effective interest method that is called actual actual. First of all, I would like to go into some terminology and notation. As we already know from another video, the outstanding debt of loan or credit after one year can be calculated as debt after year one equals the principal amount so the amount of the credit, plus interest. And the interest is given by the principal amount times the interest rate. Using bracket notation, we can write um, outstanding debt after year one equals the principal amount times one plus r. If we do the same after two years, then the outstanding debt after U2 can be calculated as principal amounts times the interest or 1 plus the interest rate times the same brackets 1 plus the interest rate or more simplified the debt after U2 can be calculated as the principal amount times 1 plus the interest rate squared. Let us generalize this formula so the outstanding debt after t years can be calculated as dt, the debt after t years, equals the principal amount times 1 plus the interest rate in the power of t. So here we have t introduced for compounding. The question now is, how do we calculate t? It is pretty straightforward as long as our years are integer numbers, like one year, two years, or a plentiful of years. But as soon as we have fractions of years, like two and a half years, as soon as we don't start at the end of a year, but in, somewhere in the middle, this is less quite forward because we don't know what t is. So, loans are not generally granted at the beginning of the year. Bonds are not purchased or sold exactly on the interest payment date. So this automatically raises the question of how to deal with fractions of years. Let me give you an example. Let's assume that a loan of x is 1000 is granted on 1st September 2019 and it is repaid on 31st March 2021. Interest is charged with a low on the loan with r equals 0 0.05 that is 5%. So in the meanwhile, no interest payments are to become due. The total interest is due at maturity. How is T calculated correctly? And of course, if we have calculated T correctly, how much interest will be paid? First of all, it should be noted that the loan in 2019 does not cover a full year, but only a fraction of the year. The same applies to the year 2021, when the loan is being repaid. And does it really matter that the middle year 2020 is a leap year? So these are the questions that we have to solve. 
There are several day day count conventions to cope with the problem. All of them apply the following fraction. We have t as some uh, fraction, and in the numerator we have the interest days, so interest is paid on how many days, and we divide that by the length of the so-called base year. So 360, 365, 366, whatever might uh, it may be. So these day count conventions are a set of rules on how to count the number of days in the numerator and how to count the number of days in the denominator of the fraction. That's the question of the day count conventions. The first day count convention that I would like to introduce is the most easy one. It's the so-called Euro interest method or also called the French interest method. The interest days ID, so the numerator of the fraction, are determined exactly to the calendar. So the interest year has 365 or 366 days. You just count in the calendar the number of days. This can be very easily done using some spreadsheet calculator like Excel. Just uh, one date minus the other date will give you some kind of integer number and that will be the number of days. And the base year, so the denominator of the fraction, is always 360 regardless of the number of actual days. So we ignore completely if the year is a leap year or something else. Uh, it is always 360 days. With the euro interest method, interest is calculated on the day of the investment, but not on the day of the repayment. With the French interest method, the investment day is not subject to interest, but the repayment day is. So there is a little difference between those two methods. These methods are used inter alia in the euro area and Switzerland in the money market and in the calculation of mortgages. The English interest method, actual 365, uh, shall be shown now. The interest days are determined exactly to the calendar. That's why it's actual. Um, so the interest year has 365 or 366 days. And the base year, the denominator of the fraction, is always set to 365 days, regardless of the number of actual days. So just a little change towards the euro interest method. Interest does not accrue on the in investment day, but interest accrues on the repayment day. This method is used in the money market in some countries of the European Union, so more or less obviously in Great Britain. The German interest method, 30 to 360, is a bit different. Why is the German interest method a bit different? Because this has a very long history. Uh, it goes back to the times when interest had to be uh, calculated by hand and not by computer or pocket calculator. The interest month always comprises 30 days. That's why we have 30 here. The interest year always comprises 360 days. That's why we have 360 here. In months with 31 days, the 30th and 31st are counted as a total of one day. If the period extends beyond February, it also has 30 days. For transactions ending at the end of February, February is counted with actual 28 or 29 days. The base year is 360 days, as are the interest month and interest year, regardless of the number of actual days. Depending on the type of investment, interest is charged either on the first or the last investment day. 
and not on the other. The US interest method. The method is based on, on the German interest method as the interest months are set at 30 days and the interest year at 360 days. The, the exception is February, which is set exactly to 28 or 29 days on a calendar basis if the beginning or end of the period falls on these days. The base year as well as the interest month and interest year is set at 360 days regardless of the number of actual days. The investment day does not bear interest, the repayment day bears interest. The 30E 360 method is used in the Swiss capital market among other places. Let's come to the daily or effective interest method, actual, actual. The interest days are determined for each calendar day, so you just look up in the calendar and start counting. The interest year therefore has 365 or 366 days. Like the interest year, the base year has 365 or 366 days in leap years for the exact calendar. For bonds, different versions of the actual actual day count conventions are applied, since these are recommended for euro-denominated bonds. There are at least three different interpretations of actual actual. The first is the actual actual as of ISDA, which is the International Security Dealers Association. Then we have the ISMA, International Securities Market Association, and the AFB Association Française de Banques. The difference between ISDA, ISMA and AFB method can be reduced to a consideration of the denominator to be used when calculating accrued interest. In all three cases, the numerator will be equal to the actual number of days from and including the last coupon payment date or period end date, but excluding the current value date or period end date. Under the ISDA approach, the denominator varies depending on whether a portion of the, of the relevant calculation period falls within a leap year. For the portion of the calculation period falling within a leap year, the denominator is 366. For the other portion, the denominator is 365. The ISDA convention is also known as actual, actual, historical, actual, actual, act, act, and according to ISDA, also actual 365, act 365, and A365. Under the actual, actual ISMA approach, the denominator is the actual number of days in the coupon period multiplied by the number of coupon periods in the year. The ISMA and US Treasury Convention is also known as actual, actual bond. Under the actual, actual AFB approach, the denominator is is either 365 if the calculation period does not contain February 29th or 366 if the calculation period includes February 29th. The AFB convention is also known as actual actual euro. Thanks for watching my video. See you in the next video.